Hey guys, welcome back to the Vintage Series. In today's video, we are doing a Marsha Brady inspired makeup look. She is a fictional character from the TV show, The Brady Bunch, um, which is actually a TV show that first aired in 1969. I used to watch reruns of the show when I was a kid and I just loved the show so much. I think it's because I was in a similar family situation, so I was relatable on that level, but I mostly loved the show because of the fashion. Everyone just looked so good good. I'm completely obsessed with the wardrobe for all of the characters in the show and I really wish that people still dress like this but my favorite definitely had to be Marsha Brady. I think the most iconic part of the Marsha Brady look is definitely the hair. You'll see in the late 1960s that it became very trendy to wear your hair very long and very straight. Um, some women even used to straighten their hair on an ironing board, but I'm, I'm not about to straighten my hair on an ironing board. I don't even own an iron. <laughs> I use GHDs, don't worry. The long straight hair in the late 1960s is like the complete opposite to hair that we saw in the 1950s and even in the mid 1960s like 1950s it was about curly short bobs and then in the 1960s it was about like big beehive hair with the curled up ends i definitely noticed that in the late 60s women had very long straight hair and i just think it's so beautiful okay enough chatting let's get into the video starting with primer i have a new primer here by elf this is the luminous putty primer so I've never tried this before and I have seen lots of people using this and talking about this online so I thought I would pick one up from my local super drug and give it a try. <clears throat> so I'm not really sure how to get this out. I think I might just scrape some off. I think I might, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, it's very, very creamy. It's super like whipped and creamy, so I'm going to just rub that between my fingers and then... It doesn't feel anything like the Maybelline Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser, which is like a primarily dimethicone based um, primer, but this one is primarily... can't say the word but it does they do feel very different this one feels incredibly silky and smooth this one just feels really creamy and it's just like a slight like tiny bit illuminating I think it's nice for foundation I'm going to use the wet and wild photo focus foundation in golden beige um I thought I'd go for something like a bit more full coverage because you know you think about people on tv and um they want to have like super full coverage foundation and makeup. I also have a new sponge. Um, this is the Microfiber Rosé Velvet Sponge by Juno & Co. It says, seamless results every time, achieve the ultimate foundation. <laughs> Achieve the ultimate in foundation coverage with this makeup brush plus blender fusion sponge. Save 50% more makeup product and 50% less time applying with our innovative design, perfect for blending in all formulas. So it's meant to be anti microbial microfiber. Okay, I'm gonna go open this and dampen it. So be yummy. It feels kind of it feels kind of fuzzy. I'm really interested to see what this is like compared to a normal blending sponge so let's go in with our foundation let's just go in and see what happens Ooh! oh my god i don't know if that's the primer or the sponge but i literally have no pores what <laughs> Wow, oh, ooh, this might be my new favorite sponge. See how it does the rest of the face. So I know that I normally apply a liquid or cream foundation with a brush and then blend it out with a sponge, but I really just wanted to mix it up and try something new. I think that the sponge is really good because it doesn't absorb as much product. But yeah, that made my foundation look really nice. Okay, next step. Just gonna use a tiny bit of my Tarte Shape Tape here and here. I don't want like a super like highlighted look under the eyes. I'm gonna go in with the sponge again and just use the tip to blend that out. Oh my God, the sponge is amazing for concealer. It just blends it into your skin instead of 
absorbing product. Cool. Nice. Okay. I'm not going to do any more concealer anywhere else just because when I look at Marsha Brady um, in the 60s and also in the recent film, um, she doesn't have like that concealer look. So I'm going to do brows. To do my eyebrows, I'm going to use my new favorite brow product, which is the Maybelline Brow Extre Extensions. <laughs> Extensions? Wow. Well, I'm gonna use the Maybelline Brow Extensions Fiber Pomade Crayon. I just did a brow tint this morning, so I don't really feel like I need a lot of this, but let's just do it for fun. I used this um, product for the first time in a recent video I made about Maybelline products. That video got so many views, it was so cool. Um, I don't know why some videos get more views than others, but hey. But yeah, in that video I tried this product and I was so impressed. I just think it's a really cool um, product innovation. So if you're looking for a new brow product, I really, really recommend this one. I think it's awesome. And then just to define the eye uh, eyebrows, I am going to just use my Dior Brow Styler along the bottom of my brows just to give it definition okay cool brows look good brows are done mm. what should we do next ah okay next i'm gonna set my face using the maybelline lasting fix loose setting powder this is awesome this is like my new favorite powder i think it might be better than the <laughs> laura mercier translucent setting powder oh i'm sorry i just really really like it like when i put my brush into it like look how much it smokes up like that like that's how finely milled the powder is it's just super lightweight and i'm not gonna like bake or anything crazy i just want a little bit through the center of the face just so that we have a nice matte set face because 1960s makeup was not about dewiness and glow okay perfect now that we have set the face let's bronze where are y'all there we go. Okay, I'm using my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I love this. <laughs> it smells like summertime. Um, Marsha Brady definitely has that like California glow, you know, that summertime California glow. So I really want to replicate that look. We're not doing any like contouring or anything heavy like that. I just want to have like sun kissed cheeks. And this bronzer is perfect for that and i like to take bronzer across the nose as well just basically anywhere the sun is going to hit is where i want to have bronzer okay looking good next i'm going to use some blush and i'm going to take the wet and wild color icon blush and this is in the shade fantastic plastic pink <laughs> i thought since i'm wearing a pink top um, a pink turtleneck that it would be very fitting to use this blush so it's very very like bubblegum pink and it does have like little flecks of silver glitter in it but i don't think that matters so i when i think of Marsha brady i think she's like this ultra feminine preppy kind of pretty perfect teenage girl which is <laughs> which is a lot different to the teenager that I was when I was a teenager I was definitely not preppy and I was definitely not perfect I was a little bit more rebellious but that's a story for another time so I feel like I went a bit ham with that blush I'm just gonna tone it down a bit by going over it with the sponge just see if we can bring that down a notch that blush is actually like really really pigmented i didn't think that for wet and wild it would be that much but i don't like to bring a lot of blush too close to my nose okay next step should we do lips i'm gonna go in with a lip liner here that i have also from maybelline this is the color sensation lip liner in the shade palest pink <laughs> Then I have a lipstick here by Maybelline. This is called 107 Fairly Bare. I think this is the right shade. I want like a 60s pale pastel kind of pink color. Let's move on to eyes. I'm very excited because 
I have a new eyeshadow palette. Oh, should we put some gloss on? Let's put some gloss on. This is the Lifter Gloss by Maybelline also. Oh, no, I don't like that. That's too peachy. I didn't order. I put it in an order with Beauty Bay and I ordered a few things. That's where I got the sponge from. But I also have had this um, eyeshadow palette in my shopping cart and saved in my favorites for like, I don't know, like five months. So I'm very excited to finally have this. This is the Matte Bright palette, the 42 color palette. I think because today we're just doing like two eyeshadows really, um, I think I'll do a separate video just on this palette alone so we can kind of like do something really, really colorful. So let me show you what she looks like. I don't even know where to start with this palette. It's just, it's so, so beautiful. It's just got like literally every eyeshadow shade I can think of. Um, it's super, super colorful. I love that we have like nudes and then we also have like cool tone shades loads of pink loads of warm loads of greens and blues and then a whole row of purple i think purple is probably after a metallic brown purple is definitely my favorite eyeshadow color just because i think it's really flattering on me and i think that purple eyeshadow is really flattering on a lot of people um so yeah this is like brand spanking new i haven't even used it um yeah it has a really big mirror which is awesome as well um so yeah i think for today's look what i want to do is i want to do like a i want to do like a wash of like a purple lilac color across the eyes and then smoke it out with some brown around the edges and then we'll do some really fluttery lashes and we'll just make it look really like pretty and doll like so i think from this palette I think I want to use this shade here, which is called Livin' for Lavender. And I think that that's perfect. I think that a perfect, uh, I think that, I think that a purple, like a pale purple color is really good for the outfit that I'm wearing because it's kind of like a mix between pink and black. You know what I mean? So let's go with that. <sighs> what brush do I want to use here? So to set my eyelids first, I'm going to go in with the, a big fluffy brush and I'm going to go into the shade here called Nothing Else. And I'm just going to load up the brush and put this across both lids just to kind of set the leftover foundation and concealer that I have on my lids so that the purple eyeshadows blend nice and easily, nice and smoothly. So this eyeshadow color, this nothing else shade, literally just looks exactly the same color as my skin. So it's perfect for setting. Using the shade Bare Necessity. I'm just going to go into the crease and see what color this comes up like. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, that's exactly what I want. I just want something slightly darker than my skin tone just to give me like some shape in here because I really want that dull eye look. So I really want that like round eye look. We're not going to go for a winged look. We just want like a very like round shape in the eye in the same shape of kind of like a rainbow so like to get that to find out where your eye socket is i just like tilt my head back a bit and look down and i can naturally see in my bone structure where that line is so i'm just following the natural shape of my eye okay cute that's nice okay now taking a slightly smaller blending brush let's dip our toes into this shade here called preppy pecan and i'm just going to take this slightly lower than that other shade and just give a little bit more depth to the eye socket and the crease i have to say these shadows blend out like a dream they're not like super super heavily pigmented i am just using such a tiny amount though and i am blending them a lot um it's gonna be interesting to see what the purple shade is like but so far so good oh my god i'm so excited to have this palette i have literally been looking at this palette for months and months and months and i've been watching other people use it on youtube and i've just been like should i buy it should i buy it i think that just like 42 eyeshadows i think this palette cost me like 23 pounds and i just think that is just such a good price i've never actually tried any of the beauty bay actual branded makeup products um behind me i don't know if you can see in the shot behind me i've actually got a full set of brand new makeup brushes that i still haven't used i got them for christmas and i really need to use them i should make a video using those soon okay i think that looks oh, 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 oh. oh my god i just dug my fingernail into the purple eyeshadow why am i like this <laughs> why did i do that oh my god 
Thank God I'm not wearing white. I got purple eyeshadow all over the carpet in our first flat in London and it was a nightmare to get out of the carpet. Oh my God, that's right deep under my nail. Why did I do that? Oh my God, I'm clearly just way too excited about this eyeshadow palette. Okay. Right, where was I? Okay, so. As I was saying, I'm gonna take uh, this blending brush, a smaller bl blending brush, and I'm gonna mix the Bare Necessity and Preppy Pecan under the eyes, and we're just gonna schmuck it out. Get it nice and schmucky. Schmuck on a pancake. So just along the lower lash line, really gently, I'm not gonna like swish backwards and forwards aggressively because otherwise I will flick brown eyeshadow all in here, and we do not want that. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh my god, these eyeshadows are beautiful. I think that eyeshadows would have to be like one of my favorite makeup products. Like I just live for a nice eyeshadow. I think that if you get the formula right and you get the shades right, like that's what can make or break a look. Now that we've got like a really nice contoured eye, I guess you could call it. <sighs> there is purple shadow all over my desk. Nice big fluffy brush. We're going into the shade Living for Lavender. We're just gonna tap, tap, tap very gently and sweep this across the lid. Oh my God, that color is, oh my God, that color is so beautiful. Oh my God, that color is perfect. Wow. Wow, it looks great. Oh my God, I love this eyeshadow palette. Fuck, I'm so glad I bought this. This is literally just the most exciting thing in my day right now. Oh my God, you guys, how are you finding lockdown? I feel like I'm losing my mind some days. Like, I, sometimes I have like really good days where I like get up, I do a workout, I eat really healthy, you know, I work really hard and I feel just like my day has purpose and I, you know, I've got to study or I've got to like, <sighs> I don't know, I just, I feel like some, most days I like feel like I have have something to do and I'm, I'm fine I'm not really thinking too much about lockdown but then other days I literally just like sit there and stare out the window and I'm like what is life like it just it can like I don't know it's hard to explain but like some days I'm literally just like so stuck in my head with like what's going on that I just don't want to do anything so yeah I don't know does anyone else feel that way are you guys like struggling I feel like I'm going mad some days there's nothing to do especially on the weekend like there's literally at the moment nothing to do and I'm sick of watching Netflix and I'm sick of <sighs> just being on a computer in a seat all the time you know what I mean like anyway how are you guys, oh my god, there's purple eyeshadow fucking everywhere. How are you guys coping with lockdown? I would love some suggestions. If you guys have suggestions on things to do and ways to cope during lockdown, then let me know. Okay, moving on. With eyeliner, I'm gonna use this liner that I picked up from L'Oreal. This is the Matte Signature Eyeliner. And this is actually a brown liquid eyeliner that I thought I would try. I just thought a brown liner would be a little bit softer than black. It's all right. It's not as good as Tom Ford, but thought I'd try something new. Let's do the other eye. Oh my God, so this morning it was like, I don't know what time would it have been. I would have been like eight, between eight and 8.30 this morning. I was like lying in bed, ready to get up. And I heard this fucking siren going off in the distance. And it was so scary. I was like, what is going on? It was like some kind of like, it sounded like the end of the world. You know, it sounded like a warning siren of like the war or something like that. And I was like, what is going on? I literally like got up and was like looking around me like, Jay, did you feel that? Anyway, it didn't last very long. I, I still don't know what it is. It was fucking weird though. So I think that looks really nice actually. I like this makeup look. I know I don't normally do like pastel lilac eyeshadow, but this makes my eyes look really nice and hazel. I might actually rock this eyeshadow look another time. I've never done my makeup like this before. Then for the inner lower lash line, I'm gonna use a white eyeliner. This is by Rimmel. And white eyeliner is just used to give that like dull eye effect. Okay, mascara. I'm gonna go with my Rimmel extra super lash mascara. I'm going back to this after another mascara that I purchased that we won't mention here that I don't like. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I think it was just the brush or the formula, but who knows. I just feel like that's so much better than the other one. A thousand times better. I'm gonna do two coats on the lower lash line because I want it to be very dull like. Okay, that's looking cute. Now we just need some lashes. So I keep all my, so I have lots of pairs of lashes and I have this tray here that I thought I'd whip out. 
This is my Kiss Eyelash Glue. I'm gonna go for some, I think we want some wispy lashes today. I'm just gonna add these lashes now. So what have you guys been watching on Netflix? Oh, I don't know if I like these lashes. Oh no, I don't think these are the ones. I think these lashes were a bad choice. Milk was a bad choice. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, Netflix. What have you guys been watching on Netflix? Um, I recently watched the assassination of Gianni Versace on Netflix and oh my days. That was such a good show. It was such a good series. I feel like the guy who played the um, assassin was like amazing, like incredible, like one of the best new actors I've seen in a while. So if you're looking for something to watch, I highly, highly recommend that. It was a fascinating um, story. It's not a documentary, it's just kind of a TV series. Um, I think it's only one season and it just goes deep into who he was and how, what he was like and like, oh my gosh, it was just, it was so awesome. Let's try these lashes. These lashes are not spiky and wispy. These are more of like a fan, like a gradual fan cat eye style pair of lashes. Okay, this is looking very doll like. So now that our makeup is done, it's time to do our hair. So, Marsha Brady was definitely famous. In my opinion, Marsha Brady was definitely famous for her hair. She had really, really beautiful, thick, long blonde hair. Um, so I think with my hair, because whilst it has grown a considerable amount in the last 12 months, um, I'm gonna actually add some clip-in extensions. So first of all, um, I'm just going to quickly blow dry my hair straight. We'll run the GHG through it and then we'll add some extensions. I haven't straightened my hair <laughs> with a GHG for so long. I've been all about the volume and the curls lately. My hair is nice and silky and straight from the GHD and I have a beautiful set here of hair extensions which we are going to clip in. So I've got two large pieces, two medium and two small. So I think what I'll do is, let's start at the front. So I have these smaller pieces here which I'm going to put in the front here. <laughs> And then the final piece. This is my, probably my biggest trick with hair extensions. So I find when I have long hair extensions in, you can see my shorter pieces underneath like that. As much as you try and like blend them in, they very, they very obviously stick out. So there's a couple of things that you can do to like disguise that. So I've seen people um, like basically section off this part of their hair and braid it and then like pin it to their scalp so that it's just completely gone. But I have another trick that I like to use. So I like to basically put this in upside down. So instead of going in that way, we're gonna go, <laughs> we're gonna go this way like that. And we're going to like capture all of that hair underneath. First things first, these part, this part of my hair needs to come down and I need to tease that. And the reason I tease it is so that the clips have something to dig into. And the reason I hairspray it is so that it gives it like a stick and a grip. And then... And so now, if I let all my hair down and we bring it all forward, you can't see that hair. And I just think that is just... <laughs> 
so clever oh my god this hair feels so nice okay so now i have beautiful long blonde hair just like marsha brady um marsha brady also used to like clip these pieces here around the back but mine are too short so that's why i'm not doing that i'm just gonna leave it nice and straight <laughs> and yes i'm very aware that you can probably see the clips um through the top of my hair through the regrowth but you know what it doesn't really matter i'm just gonna live my life until i can get to the hair salon next um, but yeah, I think this is our final look. So let's wrap it up. Um, I think the hair looks amazing. I love, I love wearing these long blonde hair extensions. I can't wait until I can get my regrowth done. I'll be properly blonde again. Um, I think I nailed it with the makeup. I think that it's subtle but still 60s, but still wearable. Like I would definitely, like I would definitely wear my makeup out like this. Like I think that the purple and the pink just go so nicely together. I think the pink lipstick isn't probably my favorite color with this look, but I just wanted to keep in theme with the 60s. Pale pink shiny lipstick was what lots of women used to wear. And I think that it's youthful and I think that it's feminine and I think that the outfit that I've decided to wear for this video just goes perfectly. This is definitely like a quintessential 60s outfit. The turtleneck with the pinafore style dress. Even though this dress is leather, <laughs> um, it is vintage. I So I just felt like it would be, I so I just felt like it would work with the video. Um, I do have another outfit on. I do have another outfit planned. So let's go put that on and finish off the video. Okay, so I'm gonna end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed another look from the 1960s. I really enjoyed putting this look together. Um, it's definitely very girly and I think it's really, really cute. But I definitely really needed to like have some fun with some makeup today and just put myself in a better mood. And I think I'm gonna go take some cute pictures now. I have one more look for the 1960s coming. It is a Janis Joplin, 1969 Woodstock festival inspired kind of look so stay tuned for that soon and then we move on to the 70s so lots of good new videos coming soon that's it for me i guess i'll see you guys in my next video bye